Hey guys, welcome to Tech Learnings. It has been quite a long since we posted our last video, and uh, I would really like to apologize for the missed schedule. And we are now back on track. And we left with Dozer. We covered up the theoretical aspects of it, and uh, let's wrap up today the practical implementation part. And uh, post that you would be able to implement Dozer in your projects. All right. So what we will be going to do today? Uh, we are going to create a sample Spring project and then try to integrate it with Dozer. Okay. So let's get started. So I create a simple Spring legacy project for our demonstration. Let's name it Dozer with Spring. It's a simple Spring MVC application. Top level package tech learnings dot dozer dot demo hit the finish button so a sample a spring mvc project is ready for us now we have to uh, we have to integrate it with dozer okay since we know that dozer is a mapping framework it maps the objects of uh, classes so we would need at least two classes right so let's create one class as employee and uh, let's add few fields to it private int id let's say private string name private double let's say salary and uh, generate the corresponding getters and setters okay so employee class is ready let's create one more class and uh, name it to employee dto so we are going to try map the employee class object to employee dto add the fields to employee dto as well let's say private int id and uh, private string name and uh, private float salary i'm keeping the salary data type as float since uh, we want to know what will happen when the data types are different will they be implicitly mapped by dozer and we already know the answer of course yeah so they should get mapped even if the data types are different dozer should implicitly take care of this for us so we are now ready with the classes and uh, next thing we should do is add the dependencies dependency of dozer to our pom.xml so i have with me notepad in order to save our time i'm adding the dependency of dozer so we are going to use here 5.5.1 version okay so we are done with the adding the dependency part now uh, let's try to create uh, the employee class object in home controller we have a built-in method ready ready made for us so let's do the modifications to this method code all right so let's create one employee class object employee employee new employee i quickly create it invoke the setters let's name it as amit salary let's say 10000 okay so we are ready with the employee class object and uh, now uh, we want it to be mapped to employee dto so one uh, way or without dozer how could we do it that you create the employee dto class object then invoke the setters of your dto and getters of your uh, employee class right but we want to see it using dozer so let's see so what dozer provides us it provides us an interface called mapper all right so this mapper is the root interface as you can see here as well it is a root interface for performing the dozer mappings from application code and uh, so it's an interface and there is an implementation class that has been given to us the class name is dozer bin mapper so it implements the mapper interface and this interface provides an api called map all right so what does this api 
take as input it takes the source object when which in our case is employee object and destination class so destination class is employee dto dot class so what in return it is going to give us uh, the reference to your employee dto object okay so now this is uh, the object which has been mapped to employee object okay now uh, let's do some changes here as well so that we can print the details to our home.gsp and uh, let's say id employee dto dot get id so i am printing to the gsp page uh, the field values for employee dto so that we can see whether the mappings have taken place correctly or not and uh, let's say salary as employee dto dot get salary all right so we are ready with our application the implementation with the help of dozer and using dozer bean class so let's run our project we are using tomcat here and the time on the server is okay we did not do any change to our home.gsp so it could not recognize okay no issues let's delete this text as well here we are so id1 name amit salary this 10000 so the field values are implicitly mapped okay and for salary we know that we had a double and flute so the conversion got implicitly taken care by dozer okay so using this approach you create the instance of dozer bean mapper class and uh, then uh, using the map api you can uh, map the objects but we would want uh, a better way would be that you create a, you have a singleton instance single instance of your dozer across your application so for that purpose we have been given a wrapper class which is dozer bean mapper singleton wrapper so it is a wrapper class for us and uh, so it provides the singleton instance of your mapper now what this class uh, need it needs one more thing an xml called dozer bean mapping so it needs an xml uh, using which it can read all the mappings that what mapping it needs to perform okay so we are going to add to our class path one xml file which is dozer bean mapping so its name must be dozer bean map mapping dot xml all right so we are with the xml thing and i have with me the content as well again to save our time i have the content now in this uh, dozer bean mapping dot xml you can specify the mappings so you can have multiple mapping tags all right for the time being i am keeping only one regarding the wildcard attribute we'll come back to that so what it takes class a which is provide me the source class class b which is the destination class and the fields that you want to map okay so our source class is employee so let's change here employee and uh, class b which is the destination class it is employee dto field let's say i am keeping name and emp name deliberately keeping a different name so that we can see that uh, uh, case as well when the field names are different right it is not necessary that you specify different field names but just to dem for the demonstration that what will happen uh, if the field names are different so you can use you can specify all those mappings in the xml uh, file all right so let's rename it to amp name 
so if the field names are different the mapping would be taken care by your dozer bean mapping.xml okay so we have done the changes in our employee dto and here also we are done with the changes in home controller so we are using dozer bean singleton wrapper and in the xml also we had specified now that the source class is employee and destination is employee dto and the field mapping we have specified is name and emb name so the project is reloaded let's try to refresh and uh, right so the fields are correctly mapped so this is uh, using the wrapper class now for the third approach should be or is that since the application is now built using spring and spring provides a brilliant concept of your dependency injection so we could have or instantiated the mapper using the dependency injection as well and perhaps uh, this could be the best approach right mapper mapper and uh, i'm auto wiring the mapper variable so we need to specify now the uh, mapping for this mapper reference variable in our xml right so let context.xml so bean mapping i have with me let's paste it here so again here dozer bean mapper instance is used it is containing an array of mapping files you can see a list and uh, you can specify more than one mapping files and now this time the name must may be different as well right so in our case let's say dozer bean mapping dot xml more than one you can specify but in this case we have only one so let's save our application so this time we are instantiating the mapper uh, by performing auto wiring all right and anything any more changes no i think we do not need anything else and let's try to just refresh so this time the mapping is done through spring dependency injection all right so we instantiated the mapper uh, you can say the interface with the help of specifying the mapping in here all right so this is about dozer one thing which uh, is left is wildcard attribute like we said by default the wildcard attributes value is true and uh, we specified here only a single field and remaining fields got implicitly mapped right but it may not be the case every time you may want uh, mapping for only the fields that you specify right so if you want that sort of behavior you can specify wildcard equal to false so what it will do now it will map only the field that you specify here so we have specified name so only name should get mapped the rest of the fields should be ignored so in the output now uh, we should get only the name the remaining fields should not get mapped so they should be instantiated to their default values okay so the reloading of the project is done and uh, yeah so here we are with the output name only the name field got mapped right so i hope uh, the wildcard attribute is also clear to you so this is about dozer thank you for watching the video and uh, before i close upon the video let me thank also because it's like i said in the beginning as well that uh, uh, it's been i think more than a month that i posted the video but you guys have been amazing and continuously subscribing watching the videos again again thank you so very much and uh, really uh, thank you so much Take care, good night, bye-bye, see you soon.